Hey, everybody, how are you doing? Hope you have a fantastic Tuesday. I want to thank everybody for joining me yesterday. But I am proud to present my really longtime friend. You know, I there are different types of people you know, whom and I have never actually met in person. <laughs> We have uh, all- is that true? I mean, we've definitely been at the you, you're in the Bay Area, right? Yeah, you know, Beth, you know, Gavin, you've been to the Balboa. We have it's a weird orbit. Everybody that you know, I know. We've <laughs> either been, we look, we must have been to the battery together at least once. Oh, unquestionably, unquestion. Oh, definitely. In fact, I think, but you know what, to, to show you the span of time, it was probably within the last between 14 yeah. <laughs> right yeah. 20 years okay so it's been in that uh, in a long span of time and it is in, it encompassed a number of great places like of course the Balboa cafe and undoubtedly the Tadish grill i know or- i know for sure that we were at a few modern luxury san francisco magazine events together for sure yeah, definitely best de- definitely absolutely yeah absolutely and uh Great to have you on, my man. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm really honored. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm honored. I, yeah, I can't wait to tell you what I got going on here. Yeah. So uh, you went from, you were on Lattice the Radio 97.3 uh, for a long time, Sarah and Vinny show. And now you're creating, or you're a creative director designing murals. But this is really more than that. Tell us about what's going on, how you made the transition, what's happening. Yeah, so I was uh, on on Alice, as you said, for 21 years. I started when I was uh, 24 years old, <laughs> and then um, after no, that, you now, right? I know, right? <laughs> I look the same. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I left there, and I, you know, it was basically right when the pandemic started uh, when I when I decided to to step away, and so I just like everyone else, I was a bit confused. Did a little bit of missions work in Uganda and South Sudan and, you know, to uh, help some people that were in need. And then I got a call and they, there's a hotel in Menlo Park called the Park James. Mm-hmm. They said, we need a creative director. So I design photo shoots. I choose the music. I find the partnerships, you know, kind of oversee and help the vibe of the hotel. The, the and, culture of the hotel, really, huh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And then... Um, you know, there was a group of people who said, hey, we're going to start making murals supporting the people of Iran during this, like, woman-led revolution. Yeah. And they said, can you help us get a wall in San Francisco? I called a pretty well-known um, art gallery owner named Wendy Norris, and she yeah, got in no, touch with the, yeah, yeah, and she got in touch with the art commissioner, and lo and behold, I find out, hey, they're going to pick the artist, they're going to pick the design. So after the mural was painted... Um, right around 17th and mission street clarion alley is, is the name of the alley uh i called the artist and i said hey can we take a picture together you know i i was a small part in making this happen posted the picture the picture goes viral and one of the people that sees it is the vice mayor of jerusalem she sends me a note and says i want a mural in israel so i said what do we do she said you need to jump on a plane and meet me so I did the 14 hour flight, landed in Israel a few days later. And I said, do you have an artist? She said, no. I said, do you have a wall? She said, no. I said, am I paying for it? She said, yes. So I uh, came up with a design, called one of my buddies at the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs at uh, in Israel, got an artist, miraculously found a wall and 26 days later, There is now, at that moment, there was one mural in the Middle East supporting the people of Iran fighting for their freedom. Wow. Yeah, it was a big deal. And then I got, I went back to Israel about a week later, if you can believe it. Maybe, yeah, or two weeks later. And I was at a wedding and I, you know, I said a prayer. I'm like, all right, God, you want another mural? And uh, next thing I know, I'm uh, talking to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. They give me another artist. And I had a different design, and I showed the artist. He goes, I'm going to make this amazing. Uh, and the great thing about Na- we the second one was in Nazareth. And the great thing about Nazareth is this. It is an entirely Arab city, 70% Muslim, 30% Christian. And even they said, hey, 
we want a mural supporting the people of Iran as they fight for their freedom. So, you know, by the grace of God, we're here in Jerusalem, the most contested city in the world, and then also in Nazareth, a predominantly Arab city. And it's a beautiful thing to see the Israelis, the Jews, standing with the people of Iran uh, as they fight for their freedom. Doesn't that give, doesn't that just make you uh, just overjoyed? All kinds of things. Here's one of the uh, murals, right? Yeah, so that's the one in Nazareth. So let me just tell you what's going on here. Um, those are 15 people that were all killed by the Islamic regime. Mm. And the the person, uh, the smallest one in the front with the, the little girl with the hijab, I don't know if you can move your mouse over her. She uh, was she's seven years old. And then the boy next to her. Yeah, that's the seven year old. And then the boy to the left is uh, that's he's nine years old. Oh. So and then the, the woman in the center, uh, her name is Massa Amini. She was the first woman beaten to death for just having a little bit of her hair uh, coming out of her hijab. And then here uh, above her to the to the right uh, is the, the boy with the long hair. Yeah. Above above that woman. Yeah. Sure. That guy right there. Mm -hmm. He is a 19 year old like world class chef. They killed him. And then the boy to his right, uh, from what I read, he this he won a few gold medals in wrestling. Huh. So so what you've got is this conglomeration of all of these, and it's all the youth, because something like 70, 80 percent of Iran's population is under 35 years old. Hmm. So it's a country of 82 million people. And then here, I'll, I'll just tell you a little bit of what's going on um, with the, the rest of the image. Mm -hmm. At the bottom uh, on the tablecloth, you have a woman riding a line with a sword on her hand. That's my nod to the fact that this is a woman-led revolution. Hmm. The hmm. line in the center is the flag of Jerusalem. And I'm, hmm. I'm always, all my murals in Israel are going to point to Jerusalem because that's where the first mural was. That's where they invited me. Um, and every person in Israel, uh, Arab, Jewish, Druze, Christian, they all have a special place in their heart for Jerusalem, all of them. Hmm. And well, then I'm, I'm curious. Oh, yeah. The woman on the horse is, is a particular person or is it just? No, it's just an image I found online. Yeah, it's just, and by the way, she's riding a lion, not a horse, a oh, lion. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I have a three lion theme. And then the, the, the last lion with the sword in its hand, with the sun rising in its background. Over here. That, yeah, that it was the center of the Iranian flag. Uh, pre-1980 uh, wow. when the islamic regime took over they took that out that's a zoroastrian symbol that dates back to the 12th century wow. so yeah I, I put a lot of thought into this and i wanted to do as much as i could to unify and combine the um the jewish culture the iranian culture here's the thing that people need to understand mm -hmm. you know both countries iran and israel have existed for four thousand years you know and they've been friends for 3,500 years, maybe a little bit more. They've only been enemies. And, and the word enemy is so much harder than, than really what they were for a couple hundred years, if that. So I, I want to remind the world that Iran and Israel are friends. They're not, they're not meant to be enemies. They're meant to be. And the, the beautiful thing is, you know, uh, Israel's, they're not, they're rolling out the red carpet for me. They're yeah. wanting the world to see that the the israelis the jews are standing with the people of iran what is on, on that note what is this image? yeah so that's <laughs> that's the original that's the one in jerusalem so mm. what we have here uh it's uh what so in all of them you're going to see the words woman life freedom mm -hmm. so because we're in uh, israel i put woman life freedom first uh up top then underneath in hebrew then in arabic Hmm. Then at the bottom is Farsi and English. So this hmm. is the first mural in Jerusalem. And the reason the mural is in gold is because the nickname for Jerusalem is the city of gold. Hmm. So I don't have the, the centerpiece of the flag, flag of Jerusalem here on this one. It was my first one. I, I guess I was getting my feet wet. Uh, those four women were all also murdered by the Islamic regime. The two on the right are Serena and Nika. They were 16. 
Hmm. And then the two on the left, um, Masa Amini, and the other woman's name is Fereshte. They're Kurdish Persians. And so in Israel, there are a lot of Kurdish Jews. And when they saw this, like a uh, few of the women, I saw a tear in their eye because they, they know who these two Kurdish women were and really warm their hearts to see. Um, you can also see the woman riding the line with a sword on her hand. I, I left that in there as well. So that, that one that we're looking at is, is uh, 15 feet wide, 21 feet long. Hmm. Wow. So here, here's the goal. I mean, you know, I'm going to anticipate your question. I feel like I'm talking too much, but I'll just. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, this, is, this is great because I've got the images and you're, it's, it's opening you up. And this is, that's the way it's supposed to be. It's organic, right? Um, right, right. Yeah. So if you're wondering, like, what's next? All right, you've done these two. So look, there there are right now in the world uh, probably like, what, 10, 12, 15 murals in the United States, like three in Canada. So these are all supporting the people of Iran. Three in Australia, maybe 10 in Europe. Um, and they're all beautiful. Thank you to every muralist who made one. But these two in the Middle East, I mean, they're in Iran's backyard. Uh, my aunt called me from Iran and said, they've been showing your murals every hour on the hour for three days straight. <laughs> so this is really like a, a, a thorn in the side of the Islamic regime. You know, this, this uh, revolution is a fire. It's a fire. And the fire needs to burn brighter and it needs to be hotter and it needs to be bigger. And every time a mural is made... Um, Anywhere in the world, you're adding you're adding a log to that fire, but uh, these ones in Israel are are huge logs, and they're really making this fire burn a lot bigger and brighter. And you know, one of my hopes is that the family members that are looking at, who've lost a daughter or a son or a mother or a sister or a brother, they look at this and they it warms their heart. It makes them want to fight harder for their freedom. It makes them it makes them not want to give up. It makes them it gives them hope. Like that is one of the main reasons I'm making these murals in Israel is to give the people of Iran hope. Now, in the long run, my hope and my dream in the immediate future is to do 18 murals in total in Israel. So I have 16 more to go, and uh, I've designed the next four. So I got to find. Got to find an Adobe uh, Photoshop artist to, to kind of help put it together on a piece of paper for me. I got to find an artist in Israel to, you know, jump on board. And then I got to find the walls. I got to meet with the mayors. So it's a it's a it's like a multifaceted process. But uh, the fact that I have two up in one month, I mean, come on. It's a yeah. miracle. I mean, how, first of all, what's been the... I'll just ask this. Has there been any pushback on this? Absolutely. 100%. Sure. So two, I can tell you two stories. One is um, when I first got to Israel, I had one of my Persian friends call me. Hmm. And she's she was upset. And she's like, what are you doing in Israel? I am so pro-Palestinian. Why would you go to Israel? Why are you doing a mural there? And, you know, this is, I, I just touched down, uh, hadn't met with anybody yet. And I said, look, uh, there is no mural right now. Uh, nothing, this is, we're just talking. And uh, I said, if and when the mural finally does go up, why don't you call me then and I'll let you yell at me on the phone for another 30 minutes. <laughs> and she said, fine, fine. She goes, I just want you to know I'm against this. I'm against what you're doing. I said, fine. You know how it is. Your friends are your friends, right? Like, right. you're not going to just... They're you know, your real friends. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're not going to just cancel people just to can't. I mean, people did in 2020 and 2021 and 2022, but hopefully, you know, the majority have gotten past that. So the meal goes up in Jerusalem, and uh, sh I see my phone ringing. It's her. It out, by the way, again. So. What would you say? I just tweeted out the picture oh. of oh, this. Thanks, brother. Appreciate oh. it. Uh, I get another phone call and she's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe the mural in Jerusalem. I can't believe how beautiful it is. I can't believe how big it is. I said, I know, right? And she says, 
and she said, in my opinion, this is the, this is the one. This is the most beautiful one in the world right now. And wow. of course, that warmed my heart. And she said, I, you know, I'm really sorry for yelling at you. Um, hmm. And so at, at that moment, you know, her heart, her heart was was melted. Um, I'll tell you one more story. So when I got back to Israel the second time and I called, you know, some people at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, you know, I I'm, I'm right now I'm funding all this myself. And these these murals aren't cheap. You know, I got to pay the artist. I got to supplies. I got to fly there. I got to get a room. And just so you know, I'm sitting watching the artist paint for six hours. The artist is coming back to me. What do you think of that person's eyes? What do you think of the hair? I'm like, let's adjust this. So it's it's a lot of back and forth. It's it's not like you know I'm paying someone heading off to the beach and surfing all day and coming out. So uh, th they gave me this artist. His name is Benzi Brofman, and uh, I said to Benzi, "You can pick any city in Israel. I'll do the legwork. I'll find the wall, and then we'll call you in." And he picks Nazareth. Now I don't know Israel. I'm going to be honest. I don't know Israel <laughs> at all. This guy picks Nazareth. So I called the Ministry of Foreign Affairs a couple days later, and they're like, hey, what's going on? We haven't heard from you. I said, oh, uh, well, we, uh, we got a wall. Miraculously, by the grace of God, we got a wall, and we're, we, we're, uh, we picked the city of Nazareth. And the, like, the silence, I mean, it was insane. And, and I, I'm not, is anyone there? And they said, uh, well, uh, we're, not, we're not sure if we're okay with that. I'm like, why not? And they're like, well, this is an Arab city. And I said, so what? And they said, well, uh, we need to think about this. And they said, why'd you pick Nazareth? I said, I didn't pick Nazareth. The artist that you picked picked Nazareth. <laughs> the person you chose picked Nazareth. <laughs> and they said, oh, really? And so finally I grabbed Benzi and I said, so... Why are we in Nazareth? <laughs> you know, he's two days <laughs> in the painting. And he says, he goes, I really love the Arabs. And he says, I love my, my brothers and sisters who are Arabic. And I want to do as much as I can to make peace and be with them and be in their town and hang out with them. And so that's beautiful. And uh, the finally, you know, the ministry calls back. Arab girlfriend in the background or something? Is, uh, Say that one more time. Do you have an Arab girlfriend in the background or something? No, no. He's a 100% Russian Jewish. He's, uh, he's married to an, another Jew. So, yeah, there's no. He, he lives in a town that's ten, uh, about 10 minute drive away from uh, Nazareth. But it's hmm. a Jewish town. He doesn't live in an Arab town. Hmm. But uh, so anyway. Uh, the ministry calls back a couple days later. They're like, okay, yeah, yeah, you know, we're okay with this. And um, and the impact of this second one, uh, especially for the Persians in Iran, to see that the, you know, the city that's 70% Muslim is standing with them, it, it really it, it affected them in a, in a way that I wasn't expecting. Um, huh. And even the mayor of uh, Nazareth welcomed us. He's a Muslim man, and he said, yeah, come on in. So... It's, it's it's honestly like Zenny, you and I have both worked on things on our own in the past. And there are times where we work on things and we're banging our heads against the wall and nothing's coming together and no one's stepping up and you're all alone. Yep. And then every, every once in a while, once That's in a real lifetime, life. <laughs> right, real life, once or twice in a lifetime, like God parts the Red Sea and yes. the people come and, and the opportunity comes and the designs come. This is one of those moments in my life. Wow. Where everything is coming together, right? Everything's coming together. Uh, you know, I, I, I haven't even told anybody this, but I think I'm going to just jump on a plane and go to Israel for three days to get a few things in order for the next um, 16 murals. Yeah. So, hey, so, so what just, I want to ask you, what does this say about the supposed rise in anti-Semitism? Or is that just an American problem? Oh, no, no. It's a real thing. It's a real thing. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure what triggered it. And I'm not even close to being an, uh, an expert in this area at all. Like, I'm a movie maker. I'm a radio guy. You know, just like you, I, I go to a lot of parties. <laughs> so, uh, not lately, it, Paul, but... <laughs> right? Not lately. It's not like it used to be pre pre twenty twenty. Well, I'm, I'm here watching my mom, so I've been, you know. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. 
Although I'm, I enjoy being with my mom. She's a great lady. She's his, history, you know, so. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah, so I, I don't know what's triggering it, but it's I see it everywhere. I see it everywhere. And and it 100% is on the rise. And um, I'm hoping with these murals, I'm combating that as well. I mean, hating someone just because they're Jewish. It's insane oh. to me, you know? I'm, I'm just going to play a theory. I believe that it is a byproduct of an economic tightness that has made people around the world more suspicious of the other communicated by the internet and then pushed along by uh, political organizations that are hired to seed social media to give us the idea the fake news perspective that we're at each other's throats by initiating online conversations specifically designed to, you know, increase the width of these fissures, right? And just as the Arab Spring was caused by bloggers, I think what's been done to us around the world has been caused by organizations like SPY, SI, excuse me, which actually is an Israeli organization that was hired by the Trump campaign in 2016. And the reason I know this is my friend happens to be Rick Gates, who was who turned on Trump uh, mm -hmm. and uh, had him on my show three three times, four mm -hmm. times. And uh, what SI did was just that. They For $2 million, they would seed social media to produce discord throughout the world through that through that medium hmm. and it's it i believe has contributed to a, a rampant anti-intellectualism not just in american life but in world life communicated through this global system um, yeah I'm, look i don't i don't some of the stuff you say i 100 percent agree with i the economic tightening of the, of the belt is definitely adding a tremendous amount of angst and and fear yeah. and and worry and and people are looking for someone to blame right and it and, makes them triggerable and so here comes these organizations and it's really something that you know a lot of people i tried to explain to my friends what was happening in 2016 uh at the Democratic Party at a high level, and they didn't get it at all. I said, hey, we're being manipulated by people out of Russia in different areas, and now they now they get it. You know, Cambridge Analytica, for example. There's a lot of examples, but but you're right though. It's you know, being able to pick up a phone for ATT service and you call overseas, that money that would normally be in America is someplace else. And it's not, you know, it's not a a nationalist statement. It's just a matter of, hey, there's a job that we used to do. You have a, you've done business, you've started businesses, of course. I'm running companies. This is my second startup. And I remember my first one, you know, I was trying to get a, you know, just telemarketer, right? Wound up striking a deal with someone in India for one tenth of the cost in Illinois. And I cried every step of the way. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So no, I. I think you hit on it, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I think you hit, I, when, when you talk about the, look, I, I have a friend, uh, an acquaintance uh, who's in an Eastern European country. And she was telling me just the other day, she's like, look, the anti-Semitism in this country right now is through the roof and they're blaming the Jews for the economic downturn. So when you, what, what you said at the beginning of, of everything you said, I, I do, I do, there's, there's some validity to that for sure. Um, it's really the multinationals, you know, blame the multinationals folks, N not us. <laughs> My last name's Abraham is Jewish. So Right. I was going to say, are you Jewish? I was going to ask you that. It's a long, complicated story, but I will tell you, if you ever go to the Doe Library, Cal, look for a book called Black Names and the United States and America, excuse me, three types of names, names that we had as African-Americans who were enslaved, like Johnson, names that are adopted when African-Americans became free, and then free names, African-Americans who were never enslaved, one of those is Abraham, so go figure. Right? So uh, do you know where in Africa your ancestry is from? I do not know my background well at all, and I need to have that done, and a lot of us as black folks don't. It's 
difficult to get people to talk about, even on my, doesn't matter if it was my mother's side of the family or my father's, it's difficult to get the, the detailed skinny of, of what happened. You know, somebody back there knows something, of course, then they pass on. Um, there, and they don't write it down and they don't tell anybody. So there it is. Yeah, it's so it's it's somewhere there. And I like the work that Skip Gates is doing. I made uh, out of um, Kate out of Harvard, uh, where he has that show where he traces back your roots and everything. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. you got it. Yeah. Can you we get you on that show? Can we get you on that show? Get me on that show. Get me on that show. <laughs> hey, Skip. Yeah, hey, Skip, come on, man. You got a story right here. Him, him, too. Him well, too. <laughs> I'm I'm a, I, I'm cu- I'm really curious to see what 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 your what your ancestry is. Yeah, I'm very same. curious. Yeah, yeah. I want to I want to know how many. Yeah, definitely. But so, so getting back to your you yeah. Know, so my my goal is hopefully by June to have all 18 done, and you know just like everybody else, you know I'm I'm trying to raise money, trying to get people interested, and in, because these like I said, you know right right now, I, you know I, I can maybe do one or two more on my own, and then I'm gonna be to be a little bit i'm gonna be hurting yeah. so so yeah that, that's that's kind of where that's where everything stands um i will say this though uh i have i have enjoyed your show a lot yeah. and uh when i hit like the 17 or 18 do you ever invite anybody back for a second time all the time i've had okay. like rick gates i've had on with three four times i lost count yeah. i've had on um obscure people you've never heard of like mike jacobs of the a Pacific Maritime Shipping Association who they don't want Howard Terminal built where the A's would have a ballpark. I've had him on. I've had on uh, Frank Sapovitz who worked for the NFL. He was Mr. Super Bowl. For some reason, right. I can't get Jim Stee. He was his predecessor and the guy that I directly work with when I was trying to bring the Super Bowl to Oakland, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I've had on, you know, Beth Schnitzer. I've had oh, on. Yeah. That's just great. I have interviewed people like well Gavin a bunch of times, um, but but it's been a, quite a while since I had a uh, had the pleasure of having one of my cameras. You know, uh, well he's and, governor now; he's too busy. Well, no, I I came hey, out. I, I hope get, you can get him as, as governor. I get them all. I get them all. You know, right. I get, <laughs> no, nobody nobody gets past nobody gets past us. <laughs> right. right. But I just haven't. You know, I'll square that circle. But no, you definitely got to have you back. Hey, and you know, I got to ask you, we talked about this on the phone, if you don't mind my bringing up San Francisco and from your perspective where it is, because you sold me something that really just, because you know, I've been here, I got my place on Adams Point, Oakland, right? But I haven't been back in a few years. And uh, what, from your perspective, has happened since the pandemic, uh. I saw that, you know, Okay, let me let me let me just begin by saying this before I answer this question, because you know, I I love San Francisco. I'm de- yeah. I was for t- over 21 years. I was entirely dedicated. Uh, you know, uh, Zenny, that I promoted so many uh, nonprofits, cafes, mm-hmm. restaurants, clubs, mm-hmm. parties. Mm-hmm. Like I, mm-hmm. I genuinely invested my time, my heart. I mean, my heart breaks for san francisco i didn't leave my heart there so i moved i moved uh, near stanford university i live i I moved out of the city i think Hmm. i I think this i think the city is a shell of what it used to be uh this is arguably mr san francisco who's left the building just i mean i i just i i never imagined ever leaving san francisco but when the pandemic hit by the time october rolled around of 2020 I was out of there. I was depressed the entire time. Um, what was the straw that broke the camel's back for you to leave? Oof. Do you remember that day where the sky turned apocalyptic mm-hmm. and it, there were the fires and the fog mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that that was one of the most. Um, okay, so what happened was during the pandemic. The, the extreme lockdown, the the meanness of the people uh, who, uh, you know, were making the rules. You were like, come on, you can't smile. You can't go for a walk. This is, and I thought this was insanity. But, you know, I, I lived in the marina and I would sh- do my grocery shopping at the marina market. And I remember just trying to walk home from the marina market and homeless people just chasing me. Uh, mm. My car window being so, you know, look, wow. here's 
here's here's the issues. Wow. The homeless situation is out of control. The fentanyl situation. What for a while there five people a day were dying on the streets of fentanyl. Um and uh on top of that the smash and grabs. Mm. Like there's what 75 Wow. Yeah, there's 75,000 reported a year, which makes me think there's 150,000 a year, at least. I bet you half are reported. So it feels like a lawless city, and the vibe just isn't there. Like when I walk around the financial district, it's just me. I'm it. Yeah, and I've noticed that on videos. It's like it's like uh, Blade Runner, or not Blade Runner, but... Yeah, 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 Blade Runner. There's another movie on... Mad Max. <laughs> Yeah, Mad Max, where it just looked like everything was just hollowed out. You know, or like they're moving a movie set and they said, hey, everybody, go home and go away and then come back. But, you know, that's not fantasy. It's reality. You know, I know people are only voting for people that, like, seem to, like, politically line up with them. But yeah. I think San Francisco is going to need some, like, tougher politicians that really, really. You know what you need? <laughs> And I know London Breed, and she's a very nice person, but you need a mayor that's going to unify the supervisors. Like, mm. you, you got to get everybody on the same. We got to, everybody has to work together. Yeah. If, if you're not, if you're not able to bring the best out of the supervisors and get everybody together working, like, I don't know if you're the right person for the job, but that's just me. Yeah. No, I, and I like London. I think the problem is we elect people based on a label mm. i'm here in the south they do the same thing it's either conservative or now progressive you used to say liberal but i can ask a person who says they're conservative what it means to be conservative and the answer they give me is not the textbook definition of conservatism sure i can ask a progressive what a progressive is. But the answer they give me has nothing to do with the definition, which, by the way, you really can't find. And we yeah. start boiling, okay? And in all of that, there's legislation on the books, as you and I are talking, that can solve these problems that none of these legislators ever use. And I've talked about it for eight years based on tax increment financing. We basically take the, let's say if you pay a property tax, that money is spread out between the state and other what called taxing agencies. Redevelopment agency takes that money and can direct it uh, by AB 464 to small businesses that are having problems with security uh, and or Head Start programs that need funding. There's a gigantic list, not just with common infrastructure uh, problems, right? Oakland right. has never used it. One candidate was Chang Tao started talking about it, who said, Hey, Zinni, I want to meet with you, but I don't want anybody to know that we're meeting because right. she didn't, you know, she know how she wanted to make it look like she came up with it, and da, 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 da. Um, and then wanted me to do some homework for her, but didn't want to pay me. I said, No. And it turned out she says, Why well, already have this consultant? You know, as much as we talk about, oh, you got to hire black contractors. White contractor, okay? So I'm thinking, and then now that she's mayor, she hasn't mentioned it once. Right. All right? And and then with San Francisco, at least, we talk about reparations for people who look like me. And you would think that Oakland, with the highest per capita black population in San Francisco, would be talking, in California, excuse me, would be talking about reparations, right? But it's San Francisco that's talking about it. Hmm. And it, it's the, but the basic problem, human, is we've forgotten the number one rule. You get money to people to solve their problems. Yep. You That's choke off the money, about. you have the problem. People have a problem with that, though. You know? I mean, yeah. it, it, and, and if you think about it, not to go off on it, but to come back home, there are two nations in the entire world that are industrial and extremely diverse. The U.S. and the U.K., but they also have problems getting money to where they're needed because it's always somebody else's problem, right? Right. And it's hurting us. It is hurting us. Zenny. Yes, sir. Thank you for yeah. this interview. I'm so yeah. grateful and uh, love, love 
the conversation. Hey, but you're looking for investors for your painting. So how the heck did they get a hold of you, man? What's well, I mean, you want to hit me up on Instagram, Human TV on Instagram. Uh, I'm also on LinkedIn. Uh, th those would be a couple ways to to reach out. Um, but yeah, anybody who cares about peace in the Middle East or anyone who cares about art used for diplomacy or anybody who wants to fight anti-Semitism or any of, you know, these things, please reach out and... Um, yeah, I could use your help. Help them. Jump in, folks. Jump in. Jump in. So did you ever get up to San Francisco? Did you ever get to the Babo at all? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, would, uh, I probably am I'm in San Francisco at least two or three days a week. Yeah, we gotta. We gotta. Yeah, we gotta have a reunion after three well, years. We, just, we need a yeah. reunion. We gotta. We gotta get the gang back. Hey, Dave Compton says, uh, "Hey, Zinni and Human Kali. Hey, I appreciate his effort in helping another country with a job of painting murals to bring about unity." You Thank go. you, David. That really means a lot. I really appreciate it, man. David's one of our big fans, and he just made it, he just contributed. Thank you for the tin bomb, as they say. I got that term from uh, Pompsy, a Las Vegas vlogger. He calls it he contributions. He calls them bombs. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Thank you. All right, my man. Human, stick around in the back, folks. We will be back. Super Bowl week. We're going to have more about the Super Bowl later. And... Um, we are going to have a lot of fun this week, so keep coming to Zenny City. The State of the Union's coming up, everyone. Right tonight. That's that's. A, and by the way, speaking of which, speaking of the State of the Union, what would you like to hear from President Biden tonight? One thing. One thing. I'm so glad you asked. We're going to end with this. Yes. I want. I want Joe Biden's lips to utter the words, "We." in the United States, stand with the people of Iran who are fighting for their freedom. Yeah. Oh, a, yes. Hey, I'm glad. Yes, absolutely. He has I'm, literally not said anything supporting the, the people of Iran. Nothing. Ah, but his wife did. Well, on the we ground. need him. We need him. It's nice yeah, that his wife I, did. I, I, thousand percent agree. But, hey, I was going to ask you if, if you knew about the uh, young man that was arrested, I believe. Are you talking about the you, the young man that won the Grammy, Shervin? Yeah, yeah, Hadjiapur? yeah. Hadjiapur? Oh, my God, of course. Like, every Iranian in the world was crying when they saw the award being given to him or him being honored. Um, that meant the world to every Persian because uh, every revolution needs a song. Mm. Like, there has to be a song associated with the cause. And that is, the song is called Bad Ayeh. And uh, that song is the theme song for this revolution, this woman-led revolution in Iran. So thank you, Jill. And Joe, tonight, say yeah. something in support of the Iranian people, please. Got it. Who, oh, man? Stick around in the background. Don't push a button, folks. That is this broadcast. Subscribe to Zinni62 and bookmark. Oaklandnewsnowblog.com and zenny62.com. We'll see ya.